It's a good thing I'm short. My name is Joe Connor. Over the past 36 years, our ordinary American family has experienced some of the best and some of the worst of America. In 1975, our father, Frank Connor, was killed by the FALN terrorists in New York City. In 1999, we felt the pain and injustice of President Clinton's clemency grant to those same unrepentant FALN terrorists who claim my father's murder. My brother and I, I witnessed the 9-11 attacks, having commuted through the Trade Center that morning, and we lost our cousin, who's a fellow Bergen County resident. Most recently, I testified against Eric Holder at his confirmation hearing a couple years ago, only to have him, thank you. Only to have Holder confirmed, unfortunately. We did gain some redemption just this past January when we made sure a convicted terrorist stayed in prison. But through all these ups and downs, I'll tell you, we have no doubts about American exceptionalism. It's up to us here in Hackensack and other Tea Parties throughout New Jersey and the rest of the country to ensure that exceptionalism, that our founding principles survive for generations to come. Our fa father, Frank Connor, was a great dad. He was a great son, husband, and friend. He was 33 years old when he was killed by an FALN bomb at Francis Tavern in New York City. It was the most deadly, he, four people were killed that day, and it was the most deadly bombing in the 130 plus bombings the FALN committed on the U.S. between 1973, or 1974 and 1983. He left his wife Mary, my mom who's here today, my stepfather Jerry, and my wife and kids. He left his Irish-born mother, Margaret, who was, had the common sense in the family, was the best person I've ever had the privilege to know. And he left his two sons, my brother Tom, who was only 11, and me, and I was nine. He left us with his legacy. He left us with a will to fight. My parents didn't raise no quitters. The leftist terrorists of the FALN chose Francis Tavern to kill, in their words, reactionary corporate executives. But they also chose Francis for its symbolic value. Francis Tavern is where the grandfather of all Tea Partiers, General George Washington, bid farewell to his officers at the end of our war against tyranny in 1783. Those who killed Frank Connor would reimpose tyranny upon us. But in the early 80s, they were arrested, tried, and convicted, and sentenced to, to appropriately long sentences of between 55 and 70 years. The bombing stopped, and Americans went on with their lives. That was until August 1999, when President Clinton, with a powerful push from then Deputy Attorney General Eric Holder, offered executive clemency to 16 of these terrorists. None of, none of the terrorists actually requested clemency. It was handed to them. Incredibly, they took 30 days to decide to take the clemency, and at the end of the day, 14 of the 16 accepted the clemency offer and walked out of jail on September 10, 1999. Two rejected the clemency. They were so committed to their cause. These are the people that Holder was putting out in America. My family and I fought against the clemencies back then by testifying in front of Congress, doing the, writing editorials, and doing the talk show circuits. While the, at the end of the day, the unchecked power of the pardon prevailed, we did fight back in my dad's name, and we left the Clintons with a, with a black eye. My brother Tom and I warned Congress back in 1999 that offering clemency to terrorists would only encourage more terrorism. But we had no idea how prophetic our warnings would be. Exactly two years later, our cousin Steve Schlag, he was our father's godson, he was my cousin, and he was one of 3,000 savagely murdered at the Trade Center. While Tom and I helplessly watched the attacks from our downtown offices. 
We were only blocks from Francis and from the World Trade Center when Steve was killed. But I'll tell you, after 9-11, we'd be helpless no more. When President-elect Obama nominated Eric Holder for his attorney general, we went, to, uh, Rick Hahn, who's FBI agent who investigated the FALN, he and I went down to DC and we testified against Holder at the, at the Senate Judiciary Committee. While testifying, I sensed that the several senators, including Specter and Leahy, were looking down at us. They had, they had a patronizing tone. They looked at our story as pathetic. They looked at Americans as pathetic, in my view. They saw us as something below them, something below their perch on Mount Olympus, or as they would call it, Capitol Hill. It was disgusting. And what they didn't get is that they are the public servants. They work for us, and it's not the other way around. Now, Specter found that out the hard way when he switched to the Democrat Party and lost the primary in 2010. Good for you, Arlen. Well, the attitude, the attitude of these senators aside, we knew that all the Democrats were going to vote, for, and vote uh, elect, <laughs> vote for Holder. Excuse me. But what was most disturbing and telling is that half of the Republican senators voted for his confirmation. And all I heard from those weak-kneed Republicans back then was we have to choose our fights. Well, let me tell you, going, fighting against Holder's nomination was the right fight. It was the right fight at the right time, and they refused to do it. And they're no different today. No different from the Republicans who give in and allow the Democrats to, to dictate the immoral, out of control deficit spending that's going on in this country. And they won't fight for our, for our rights and for our founding principles. It's not all bad news. We finally scored a victory in January of this year when a small group of FALN victims, family members, and FBI trekked out to Terre Haute, Indiana to the federal prison to oppose FALN leader and founder Oscar Lopez's parole. Lopez was one of the two who refused Clinton's clemency and how he was looking to get out. Well, Oscar and his brother Jose are both, uh, you might have heard this before, community organizers from Chicago. <laughs> Go figure. And that's not, that's not BS, that's the truth. Well, the parole board did the right thing and Oscar Lopez should spend the next 12 years of his life until he reaches 80 years old in prison where he belongs. Unless, of course, another pres presidential pardon comes his way. Finally, we had some justice for Frank Connor and the other FALN victims. During our decades-long battle, it's been a lot of battles, some of the media and political types have asked me well, like, what organization do you belong to? And I look at them, I'm like, I don't belong to any organization. It's just family, friends, and me. And the question kind of stunned me at first, but then I realized that we're kind of like the Tea Party here and our founders, where independent people can get together and fight back tyranny. And we were doing it, and we're doing it here, and that's the way we're going to win this thing. discovered that the people who killed my dad are the same people who now run our government. They couldn't defeat us through bombings like they tried to in the 70s, so they changed tactics and moved to politics. They've tried to, they tried to take the wealth, steal the wealth of the middle class who they've always hated, and now they're, they're in power in doing that. They've done it through lies, through double talk, and through deceit. It's like Orwell's 1984. Back in the 1970s, they ranted about a coming ice age, right? Now it's global warming. It's a global warming hysteria designed to, to regulate us more, to tax us more through this tax and trade. 
and there's Chuck Schumer labeling us as extreme. Well, he and his cronies are trying to bankrupt our country. They brag about tax cuts to 95% of American families when 50% pay no taxes. And their fair solution to deficits is always to tax, to punish the most productive among us even more. In New Jersey, the top 1% of earners pay 41% of the taxes. This is nothing more than redistributing wealth from the American dream to the dreamer. They pay lip service to strengthening our country, but they allow our poorest borders to remain open, jeopardizing our sovereignty. They capitulate to terrorists through the reprehensible political correction of turning a blind eye to radical Islam. They call it a fairness doctrine as they scheme to pull our freedom of speech from the public airwaves. Their employee free choice is designed to take away people's right to a secret ballot. They claim to fight for the middle class as they sell our wealth and our futures to public sector labor unions. Obama has the nerve to lecture us about fiscal responsibility as he advocates increasing the debt limit and advances a federal government, a federal budget that, that will bloat our unsustainable debt to over $14 trillion. Their actions and words have been intentionally twisted. They willfully confuse in the issue to attempt to make normal, intelligent Americans give up, thinking that they've done something, that they don't get it, that they've done something wrong. Well, let me tell you, we the people get it. We don't miss anything, and we've had enough. We have to run our country as we run our families. With moral, with security, morality, and fiscal clarity. Like a family who protects their homes and their possessions, we must secure our borders. Like a family who saves for college and for a rainy day, we as a nation must eliminate waste, reduce spending, and slash the back-breaking tax burdens so many uh, unworking Americans that so many politicians like to make the object of their condescending platitudes. Let me tell government how to help hardworking Americans get out of our way. We don't need your help. If you want us to help secure our freedoms for the future, I have a couple of suggestions. Cut spending. Cut taxes. Dismantle Obamacare and all those other impediments to our prosperity. Secure our borders. Admit, identify, and articulate who our enemies are. And fight those enemies with the goal of victory, not stalemate. We have to embrace our allies. And we have to remember our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. Our rights are granted by our God and not by our government. It is government's role to ensure that those rights are protected and not theirs to parcel out. Some might say that currently America is on the decline, and maybe in some ways they'd be right. But with the group we have here in Bergen County, in New Jersey, and the rest of the country, we're gaining momentum in the right direction. It's we, the people, our friends and our family, who will ensure America's success into the future. Look, all of us here today don't have to agree on everything. We just have to agree on one thing. And that's in November 2012. Reagan said, Freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. It is not passed to our children through the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on to them for them to do the same. Now it's our time to fight. Thank you.